Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. Today on Wednesday, beginning of April, um, another video about two books from the Women's Prize for Fiction in the UK, The Long List. As I said uh, in the previous video in which I discussed two books, three things about Elsie and uh, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I will leave a link to this Women's Prize uh, Long List number one uh, video down below. I'm not going through the whole long list and talking about all the books. I just pick um, a couple that I've read recently um, and then I will wait until the shortlist is announced at the end of April the 23rd and I will cus discuss the books on the shortlist. So today, as I said, two more books uh, and this video is almost rent free because um, I enjoyed them more than I did the last two and the two books today are Elif Batuman the Idiot um, and uh, Jesse Greengrass Sight. First up is Elif Batuman the Idiot. Um, I knew Elif Batuman uh, um, young from my perspective young, she's just turned 41, or will turn 41 this year. Uh, so a 40 year old Turkish, Turkish American writer. She works as um, a staff writer for The New Yorker. And I came across her um, five, six years ago when I read a nonfiction book about Russian literature, The Possessed, Adventures with Rus Russian Literature and the People Who Read Them, or Russian Books and People Who Read Them. And I quite liked it. It was humorous. It, it um, yeah, it was not brilliant, but, but I liked it. Um, so The Idiot, which was published uh, last June in 2017, June, uh, was her first novel. So it's a debut novel, but it's not a debut book. Um, the Idiot is set in 1995 and covers one year at Harvard University following Celine, an 18-year-old Turkish-American student who embarks on the adventure, A New Life, of studying. She enrolls for literature courses, linguistic, because language seems to be what interests her, um, what can you do with language and how does language shape uh, your uh, world view and then we follow Celine as she makes friends we, we there are anecdotes about her, her two roommates and then she befriends Svetlana um, uh, also a first year student from uh, Serbia and uh, Celine also gets quite obsessed with an older student um, who is already in graduate school, Ivan, um, with whom she has uh, Russian uh, language courses. Um, what I liked about the positive first, what I liked about the book um, is the, the, the first half was uh, when Celine starts university, we get these snippets of university life, which are uh, at times hilariously funny. Um, and the it's it's not a, a a story told from you know one beginning point and then with a flow to towards the end but it's more snippets and i think um what batterman does really well in this first part of the book is that it sort of captures the fragmented life of a student who you know goes to a course and then coffee and the cafeteria trying to find her way in this new surroundings, but also trying to find her way into adulthood. Um, I quite liked the writing. It was not brilliant, I thought, but it was just, you know, decent, decent writing. Uh, and then in the second part, in the second half of, of uh, the year, um, Celine embarks on a two months long journey to Hungary where she teaches uh, English uh, in small Hungarian villages to, to people there in, in small Hungarian villages and she, she does that because she wants to follow Ivan. The relationship between uh, Celine and Ivan is the main, yeah, the core of the book um, and that is in the beginning I thought also quite well done. It's this you know, sort of dance around each other where they communicate through emails and then Celine obsesses about each line in an email that Ivan sends. And I, I could relate to that thinking back a um, long, long, long time ago when I was 18 and you have this, you know, sort of very 
suspicious and carefully uh, crafted, uh, trying to get to know somebody. So I, I could relate to all that and to the student life. My main problems with the books were twofold. The first was, uh, the second part was way too long uh, in that Hungarian village, I thought. Uh, and that also was true partly for the first part. At some point, these details uh, get really boring. Uh, and you, you know, you said, come on, go on. So I thought the pacing, if you want to call it that, of the book was not very good. It was um, way too um, broad at a certain point. Um, and the other thing that, that bothered me is that um, Batuman, uh, now there are actually two more things that bothered me. The first is that um, at a certain point, this picturing Celine, she, she tells it from the first point, first person point of view, as an idiot, uh, not knowing anything, was a bit, no, was really overdone. Like the, the start when she first encounters email is okay-ish and sometimes even funny, but then later on uh, Celine is pictured, is portrayed as somebody who really doesn't know anything, even though she is from a quite well-to-do background and had good schooling. For instance, when she goes out with Ivan for the first time to have a drink, uh, and Ivan, um, after they finish the first drink, Ivan asks wh whether he should get a second, and then she says, well, I didn't know that going out for a drink a drink meant more than one drink. That's just silly. And there are many things like those. The most interesting parts, uh, but on the uh, at the same uh, time, another flaw of the book, I thought, um, are the reflections on language. Because those uh, parts are, for, for the most, at least for me, they were really interesting, but they don't fit... Um, if you, if you think that you're told this from the perspective of an 18-year-old. It's quite clear that the 40-year-old author is putting these thoughts uh, in Celine's mind. And I, I thought that that didn't work. That was just a, a break within the novel uh, to have reflections that are much more mature and much more uh, from, a, from a person who has 20 years of experience with language. So... All in all, I thought it was an okay book, not great, not brilliant. The writing was decent, um, but I wouldn't call it, you know, one of the best books written by female authors uh, within the last year. So, but if you're into this kind of, you know, college novel, um, uh, which is quite funny and you might have to fast forward a couple of pages because it gets a bit boring, then you might be interested in the book. Uh, so it was not all bad, but it, it wasn't really good either. And the second book, uh, like I mentioned before, is this one, and that is Jessie Greengrass' Sight, published this year, beginning of 2018. Jessie Greengrass is uh, a British author. She was born in 1982. Um, this is her debut novel. Uh, she studied um, literature and philosophy in Cambridge, where she now lives. Um, and the book is um, a personal account of the unnamed female uh, protagonist. It's written in first person as well. Uh, we don't know whether it's autobiographical or not, but that's just a side note. So a young a woman in her 20s expecting her second child. Um, the, it's told in a very quiet uh, voice uh, reflecting on motherhood, what it means to be a mother, because um, the uh, protagonist already has a, a daughter who is, when the novel opens, we don't know quite yet, but it, three or four years old. Um, and her partner, uh, Johan, uh, Johan, I don't know how you pronounce that um, in English because it's, it's it's actually quite a German name. So we have this this family situation, um, but it's it's the the whole novel is a reflection on what it means for her, you know, to expect her second child, and she thinks back of what it meant to be pregnant for the first time, her relationship with her mother, 
and other women in the family and in between you have reflections on looking beneath the surface and Greengrass does that with sort of historical fiction parts um, uh, infused into the novel. So we have a part about Röntgen uh, uh, when he in invented, you know, the x-rays, uh, focusing especially on, a, on the first picture he took from the hand of his wife Berta, where you see the bones underneath. Uh, you have a part about Freud uh, looking, you know, underneath the surface, into the soul, and you have uh, also a part about the first um, uh, doctors who uh, would perform a caesarean section. So these more historical fiction parts are always in between the novel. Um, I thought that the book didn't work as a novel. That was my my main yeah, problem uh, or negative um, aspect of the book. Um, it it would have worked, I think, much better as a more non-fiction reflection on the topics that Greengrass wants to discuss. As a novel, I thought it was a failure. I liked um, the historical fiction parts in between. If you are interested in, in that history, you know, Freud and Röntgen, um, you will probably like those as well. Uh, I thought they were much better written than the other parts because I thought the reflections um, uh, in, in the here and now, uh, when you know, you're know you told about the, the, the second pregnancy, but also in the back flashes when she tells you about expecting her first child, um, where for a, a lot of times really overwritten, you know, as if heavy thinking had to be pushed into the writing, which made it um, like molasses, really, yeah, you had to sort of pry open the book in order to get um, to get into the core and into the novel, into the story. A lot of people loved this book, by the way. Um, Eric from A Lonesome Reader uh, made a video about it before it was uh, nominated for the Women's, fi uh, uh, Women's Prize for Fiction. Um, um, he made a video that this book should win the Man Booker for this year, so I will leave a link to his video down below because I think he gives a, a different perspective on the book. And I can see that what people would fascinate uh, with the book. Um, like I said, that the subject and this idea, what it means to be a parent, what it means, you know, to be pregnant, to be, uh, to look underneath the surface um, where there is another human being in you. I can see all that. But like I said, I, I, I don't think it worked as a novel. So I think it was... Yeah, I, I understand why it was on the long list, but um, I wouldn't uh, agree with Eric that this book should win the Women's Prize or should win the Man Booker. So it was a sort of a, yeah, okay, I can see your point, but you should have written it in a different form and not in a novel. So this was it for the second video discussing books from the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. As I promised, even though I didn't really uh, like the books, it was a rant-free video. Uh, let me know in the comments whether you read any of the two books or whether you are interested in reading any of the two books. Uh, and I will, will leave a, a list of the, all the books nominated for the Women's Prize in the um, description box as last time. And I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.